In the dimly lit corners of cinematic history, there exists a masterpiece that has left an indelible mark on the hearts and minds of those fortunate enough to experience it. Picture yourself in the hushed atmosphere of a vintage theater, the screen illuminated by the flickering light of anticipation. The year is 1958, and Alfred Hitchcock's Vertigo is about to take you on a journey like no other. As the hauntingly captivating narrative unfolds, you find yourself ensnared in a web of mystery, romance, and psychological intrigue. The enigmatic characters draw you in, their emotions palpable, their stories resonating across the decades. It's a movie that transcends mere celluloid, inviting you to delve deep into your own psyche and question the very nature of reality. And then, there they are, those moments that etch themselves into your memory. The dizzying spiral, the vertiginous heights, the hypnotic gazes, each frame meticulously crafted to linger in your thoughts long after the credits roll. It's a symphony of visuals and emotions, a dance between the known and the unknown that leaves you grappling with your own perceptions. But now, as we step beyond the screen and into the realm of fascinating trivia, let's peel back the curtain and explore the hidden gems that make Vertigo even more captivating. These nuggets of insight illuminate the creative process, the behind-the-scenes magic that breathed life into this cinematic gem. From the audacious camera techniques to the delicate nuances of the storyline, each tidbit adds a layer of richness to the experience you thought you knew so well. So, dear cinephile, as we embark on this journey through the lesser-known facets of Vertigo, allow yourself to relive that first encounter, those unforgettable moments that forever tie you to this cinematic treasure. Get ready to see the film through a new lens, one that uncovers surprises and trivia, enriching your connection to this timeless classic. After all, it's not just a movie, it's a tapestry of emotions, ideas, and artistic brilliance woven together in a way that only Alfred Hitchcock could master. Buckle up for a ride into the heart of Vertigo, where the familiar meets the uncharted, and where the line between reality and illusion blurs in the most mesmerizing of ways. Get ready to be fascinated, enlightened, and inspired, for the secrets of Vertigo await. Mysteries unveiled, intriguing tidbits about Hitchcock's Vertigo in the realm of cinematic enigmas, Alfred Hitchcock's 1958 masterpiece Vertigo reigns supreme. Amidst its gripping narrative and visual splendor, lesser-known details shimmer like hidden gems, awaiting discovery. Among these, the symbiotic dance of artistry and narrative emerges as a captivating revelation. John Farron, the mastermind behind the surreal nightmare sequence design, also holds the brush strokes that birth the pivotal portrait of Carlotta. This haunting creation, with its mesmerizing grip on the protagonists, conceals a whimsical secret. Enter production designer Henry Bumstead, who, with a playful stroke, fused Carlotta's visage with that of Midge, injecting a note of levity into the eerie. Yet Farron's palette does not stop there. A portrait of Vera Miles, initially poised to embody Madeline, found its way onto his canvas. A testament to the intricate interplay of art and reality, these brush strokes mirror the multi-layered essence of the film itself. Delving deeper, the cinematic lexicon intertwines with a curious revelation. While the accolades often point to second-unit cameraman Erman Roberts as the inventor of the iconic Contra Zoom, shadows of familiarity stir. A phantom image surfaces from 1,954 seconds Hobson's choice, wherein a tipsy Henry Hobson descends into a basement abyss. Strikingly akin to the vertigo-inducing effect, this prelude predated vertigo by four years. The reel echoes across time, an unintended harmony that fuels speculation on creative cross-pollination. Stepping onto the streets of San Francisco, we encounter the Empire Hotel, a crossroads of destinies. Here, James Stewart's relentless pursuit culminates in a reunion with Kim Novak's enigmatic allure. Yet, the narrative threads weave beyond the screen. The Hotel Vertigo, Nita York, rises on Sutter Street, preserving the essence of the cinematic encounter. Room 501, a testament to Novak's spectral presence, resonates with echoes of an unrestrained past. As of 2023, the hotel's doors are sealed, casting a shroud of mystery over its vacant corridors. In the labyrinthine universe of Vertigo, these fragments coalesce, shedding light on the intricate tapestry of creation. As we peel back the layers, a richer, more tantalizing narrative emerges, proving that Hitchcock's opus continues to whisper its secrets to those who listen closely. Unveiling the enigmatic elegance, decoding Kim Novak's wardrobe and Hitchcock's Vertigo in the timeless classic Vertigo, Sir Alfred Hitchcock's meticulous attention to detail is as legendary as the suspense he masterfully weaves. Beyond the intricate plot lies a fascinating narrative of collaboration between Hitchcock and renowned costume designer Edith Head, delving into the nuances of Madeline's wardrobe, played by Kim Novak. The iconic gray suit and enigmatic accessories, meticulously curated, become more than just clothes, they metamorphose into a visual language conveying the character's essence. The choice of a gray suit for a blonde woman might seem paradoxical, but Hitchcock's audacious vision had deeper implications. The suit's hue was specifically chosen to evoke an eerie ambience, setting Madeline apart from the expected vibrancy. Alongside this, the inclusion of the black scarf on her white coat wasn't mere aesthetics, it was a deliberate juxtaposition, creating an unsettling contrast that played into Hitchcock's meticulously constructed aesthetic. 
However, the synergy between Hitchcock's vision and Novick's personal preferences wasn't always seamless. Novick, arriving on set with her own perceptions of the character, voiced reservations about the gray suit and black shoes. This led to a compelling clash of artistic perspectives. Hitchcock, famously meticulous, imparted an unexpected insight into his creative priorities. The visual elements trumped the narrative itself. The gray suit and black shoes held profound significance for him, an integral part of the cinematic narrative he had been cultivating for months. Novick's initial reluctance eventually yielded to the director's steadfast conviction. She harnessed her adaptability and turned the attire into a symbol of her character's complexity. The gray suit became a canvas on which her character's mystique was painted, each fold and scene contributing to the enigma. Novick's transformation from skepticism to embracing the gray suit underscores the symbiotic relationship between an actor's interpretation and a director's vision. In Vertigo, the gray suit and black shoe cease to be mere clothing choices. They epitomize the meticulousness of Hitchcock's craft and the artistry of Kim Novick's portrayal. Beyond the intrigue of the plot, this sartorial collaboration stands as a testament to the layers of intention that can be woven into the fabric of cinema, creating an enduring masterpiece that continues to captivate audiences, decade after decade. Hitchcock's Meticulous Craft, a closer look at Vertigo's elaborate soundstage in the realm of cinema, Sir Alfred Hitchcock's devotion to his craft is unparalleled, and his 1958 masterpiece Vertigo stands as a testament to his meticulous attention to detail. Amidst the film's captivating narrative, one lesser-known aspect that epitomizes Hitchcock's dedication is the recreation of Ernie's restaurant entrance. Renowned for his preference for controlled studio environments, Hitchcock's decision to painstakingly replicate Ernie's entrance might seem perplexing. This elaborate set, meticulously designed and exorbitantly expensive, graced the screen for a mere 15 seconds in two swift shots. Hitchcock's reputation as a perfectionist, however, leaves no room for surprise. His aversion to outdoor filming is well documented, as he notoriously crafted entire apartment courtyards for rear window to his two real outdoor shoots. This obsession with precision culminated in the extravagant set of Ernie's entrance, a homage to his resolute commitment to his vision. Such fervent dedication to studio settings might seem excessive, but it's vital to consider Hitchcock's drive to maintain full control over every element of his films. As audiences, we often find ourselves immersed in a world that appears seamless, yet these behind-the-scenes choices underline the true essence of the auteur's cinema. Vertigo is no exception. The film's magnetic allure extends beyond its set design, delving into the realm of music. The haunting theme song, aptly titled Vertigo, composed by Jay Livingston and Ray Evans, carried an eerie resonance that resonated with the film's psychological intricacies. Curiously, despite its evocative nature, the song performed by Billy Eckstein was kept from the final cut. Rumor has it that Hitchcock, with his masterful intuition, deemed it inappropriate for the film's delicate balance. In a landscape where every artistic decision carries significance, Hitchcock's selection to omit the Vertigo theme song further attests to his unerring instincts as a filmmaker. Through lavish sets and deliberate musical choices, Vertigo remains a testimony to the unparalleled precision of Hitchcock's directorial prowess. On location filming lasted 16 days, and an elaborate replica of Ernie's restaurant entrance served as a testament to Hitchcock's meticulous devotion to his craft. The haunting Vertigo theme song, while composed and recorded, was omitted from the final cut under Hitchcock's discerning eye. In these intricate decisions, the director's legacy endures, capturing his unwavering commitment to the art of storytelling. Master of suspense, Alfred Hitchcock's 1958 masterpiece Vertigo continues to enthrall cinephiles with its intricate storytelling and visual brilliance. But did you know that the movie's gripping allure owes a debt to a near-forgotten incident from Hitchcock's past? The iconic Vertigo zoom, a technique that later became synonymous with the film's name, was not a spur-of-the-moment stroke of genius. In fact, Hitchcock's inspiration for this technique, which manipulates the camera's zoom while adjusting its physical position to create a disorienting visual effect, stemmed from a personal experience. During a social gathering, the director had a sudden spell of dizziness and fainted. This sensation of distorted perception stuck with him, eventually finding its way into Vertigo. Hitchcock's ambition, however, predates even Vertigo. He initially conceived the notion of his famed Vertigo zoom way back during the production of Rebecca in 1940. Technological limitations of the era held him back from realizing his vision, leaving it to be realized years later. This visionary approach to cinematography would later leave an indelible mark on film history. Beyond its technical innovation, Vertigo also stands as a beacon of geographical accuracy. Unlike many movies that take liberties with on-screen geography, the driving route showcased as James Stewart's character tales Madeline through the city is spot on. This level of precision echoes the film's commitment to immersion, drawing audiences deeper into its suspenseful narrative. This is a far cry from the disjointed cityscapes that often grace the silver screen. Digging into the behind-the-scenes camaraderie, another intriguing facet emerges. Despite his retirement from public life in 1994, James Stewart's passion for the craft endured. 
he actively supported the efforts of James C. Katz and Robert A. Harris during the 70mm restoration of Vertigo, which saw the film restored to its full visual splendor in 1996 and early 1997. Stewart's involvement serves as a testament to the enduring bond between artist and creation. In its totality, Vertigo encapsulates Hitchcock's unending quest for innovation and perfection. From its unforgettable storytelling to its pioneering techniques, the film remains a timeless testament to cinematic excellence. As we bid adieu, the swirling world of Vertigo remains suspended in time, its allure forever etched into the tapestry of cinema history. Just as Scotty Ferguson spiraled into the depths of obsession, we, too, find ourselves drawn into the intricate web of emotions that Alfred Hitchcock so masterfully wove. What lies beneath the surface of this enigmatic masterpiece? Perhaps, in the echoing corridors of our own experiences, we find echoes of Scotty's haunting pursuit, the quest for identity, the shadows of desire, and the labyrinthine twists of fate. As the curtains fall, I invite you to recline in the theater of your thoughts, where memories meld with the magic of storytelling. How did Vertigo weave its spell upon you? Was it the poignant gaze of Kim Novick's Judy, the vertiginous heights of the bell tower, or the echoes of Bernard Herrmann's haunting score? Share your whispers of nostalgia, your musings on its timeless themes, and your contemplations of its enduring impact. Every viewer becomes a voyager, embarking on a personal journey through Hitchcock's lens, confronting the depths of longing, deception, and transformation. And so, as you rekindle your connection with Vertigo, remember that its ripples extend beyond celluloid frames, they resonate within the corridors of your own perceptions. Thank you for entrusting your time and curiosity to this exploration of cinematic wonder. Your reflections enrich the legacy of Vertigo and add new hues to its kaleidoscopic allure. Until we meet again, keep the memories close and the conversations alive. Reflect, share, and keep the legacy alive.